Number seven, Naya Stevens. Shortly before 4.30 p.m. on May the 8th of 2019, Wisconsin police pulled over a white SUV that had been speeding near West Arden Place in the village of Butler. Upon approaching the stopped vehicle, an officer reportedly detected the smell of marijuana emanating from inside. He questioned the driver, identified as Naya Stevens, about the odor, at which point she revealed that she'd smoked in the car the previous night. As shown in footage captured by the officer's body cam, Stevens also admitted to not having a driver's license. The 20-year-old was then asked to step out of her vehicle, but she spurned the officer's request and instead sped away from the scene. After crossing both the westbound and eastbound lanes of the roadway, Stevens crashed into a wooden telephone pole. She then got back onto the road and clipped the rear driver's side of the patrol car before fleeing the scene. The collision caused one of the police officer's tires to deflate, thereby disabling the vehicle. Other members of the Butler Police Department were subsequently called in to pursue Stevens, who reportedly reached speeds of up to 90 miles per hour during the ensuing two and a half mile chase. The young woman mounted the sidewalk, ran a red light, and nearly struck another motorist before eventually losing control of her vehicle, which officers found flipped over on the side of the road. Stevens was ordered out of the overturned car at gunpoint. She attempted to flee once again but was corralled by an officer and placed in handcuffs. In the aftermath, Stevens was charged with attempting to flee or elude an officer, recklessly endangering safety and resisting an officer. Number six, Kellen Spadoni. Louisiana woman Kellen Spadoni mistakenly received more than $1 million in her brokerage account with Charles Schwab in early 2021. It later emerged that the 33-year-old, a former 911 dispatcher for the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, was only supposed to receive an $82 deposit. However, because of a clerical error made by staffers at the financial services company, Spadoni ended up having upwards of $1.2 million erroneously transferred into her account. Officials at Charles Schwab realized that a mistake had been made the following day, and they quickly attempted to reclaim the misdirected funds. They were unable to do so, however, as Spadoni had already transferred the money into a separate account. The woman then allegedly used her mistakenly obtained fortune to purchase a new car and place a down payment on a house. It was at that point that Charles Schwab notified local police of the situation and Spadoni was consequently ordered to return the money so that it could be distributed appropriately. The Harvey resident refused to obey law enforcement's directive and she proceeded to ignore phone calls, text messages and emails from Charles Schwab workers trying to get in touch with her. A warrant was then issued for Spadoni's arrest and she was ultimately booked into the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center on theft charges. Charles Schwab reportedly filed a federal lawsuit against Spadoni in April of 2021. In it, the financial firm claimed that the woman's account included a clause which made her legally required to return all funds in the event of an overpayment. It was reported that only 75% of the misbegotten money was ever recovered. Number five, Fabio Cidades. On November the 19th of 2021, Englishman Fabio Cidades was given a suspended 13-month jail sentence for assaulting his ex-girlfriend, whose identity wasn't disclosed by the authorities. The Bishop Auckland resident was also issued a restraining order that prohibited him from making any form of contact with the victim. 10 days later, however, Cidades' former partner watched as an obscured male figure approached the back door of her Newton Acliff residence at about 5 p.m. The man, who would be revealed as Sidades, forced his way inside the home and grabbed the woman by the hand to prevent her from fleeing. Her abusive ex-boyfriend's presence reportedly made the victim scream in fear and she repeatedly told him to leave, but he refused. In a rambling speech which was said to have vacillated between apologetic and erratic, Sidades proceeded to profess his love for the woman and pleaded with her to allow their relationship to resume. The homeowner was ultimately able to call the police and officers were sent to arrest the man for breaching his restraining order. In the aftermath of her latest encounter with Sadades, the latter's ex-girlfriend began the process of selling her house so that he would no longer know where she lived and therefore be unable to make any more unannounced visits. 22-year-old Sadades was ultimately sentenced to 28 months in prison and was also issued a lifetime restraining order, forbidding any further contact with the victim. Number four, the Santa Rosa court sting. Law enforcement officials in Santa Rosa 
California organized a sting operation in January of 2017 that targeted motorists suspected of driving with suspended or revoked licenses. On the 31st of the month, undercover police officers were stationed outside of the Sonoma County Courthouse. Between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., law enforcement staked out individuals who had been ordered not to drive by a judge or whose licenses had been suspended. In total, nine people were followed out of the courtroom by officers to ensure that they had means of transportation other than operating a vehicle themselves. Five of the targeted individuals proceeded to drive themselves from the courthouse in direct defiance of the judge's orders. Each of the offenders was promptly pulled over and arrested by the police. Subsequent reports suggested that the suspects faced the possibility of jail time and longer license suspensions as a consequence of their decisions to disobey their court orders. Number 3. Angie Frost In March of 2018, police officers in Tulsa, Oklahoma, initiated a traffic stop on a car that had previously been reported stolen. The driver, later named as 36-year-old Angie Frost, pulled over to the side of the road and conformed to the officer's command for her to exit the vehicle. Frost was then arrested on suspicion of stealing the car in question. Subsequent reports indicated that the woman was initially compliant with the policeman who'd taken her into custody without incident. Frost was placed in the driver's seat of one of the squad cars while the officers stood outside chatting with one another. As their conversation continued, one of them noticed that the suspect had somehow managed to slip her cuffs before climbing into the patrol car's driver's seat. She then proceeded to lock the doors and speed away from the scene in the stolen police cruiser. Officers gave chase and before long, Frost had pulled into the parking lot of a nearby hotel. She abandoned the vehicle and fled on foot but was quickly caught by the pursuing officers. Frost hadn't directly disobeyed their orders, but the legal limits of her circumstances were implied, considering that she'd stolen the same law enforcement vehicle in which she was being detained. After she was taken back into custody, Frost was charged with possession of a stolen vehicle, larceny of a vehicle and resisting an officer. In October of 2018, the Tulsa Police Department released dash and body cam footage of the March incident, which rapidly went viral. Number 2. Juris Bredis 21-year-old pedicab driver Juris Bredis was issued a community protection notice by Greater London's Metropolitan Police after he'd reportedly used his rickshaw in a manner described as antisocial. On January 7th of 2016, he was arrested again for failing to comply with the protection notice's stipulations, at which point he was given a five-year criminal behavior order and a conditional discharge. As per the terms of his release, Bredis was restricted from operating his pedicab within certain London area codes. Only three days after his release from custody, officers on patrol in Westminster spotted the young man on a pedicab on Bird Street, which was part of the area from which he'd been banned. Bredis attempted to flee from the constables, but he was ultimately caught and arrested again. Two days later, during a hearing at Westminster Magistrates Court, Bredis was sentenced to 24 weeks in jail for breaching the criminal behavior order. An article published by the news outlet My London detailed how neighborhood policing teams in the Westminster area have partnered with government bodies like Transport for London to crack down on the widespread criminal activity by the city's pedicab operators. Number 1. Simon Pierre Canul On May the 29th of 2016, Simon Pierre Canul was dining with his partner at a tapas restaurant called La Tapajure in the Canadian city of Sherbrooke. The couple reportedly ordered four tapas dishes including beef tartare and had made sure to inform their waiter that Canul was severely allergic to seafood. The server allegedly didn't write their order down and also neglected to tell the kitchen staff about the customer's health condition. When the couple's meal arrived a short time later, they'd mistakenly been given salmon tartare on one of their dishes. Due to the darkened lighting in the restaurant, they didn't initially notice the error. Canul proceeded to consume some of the salmon, after which he rapidly fell ill. The epinephrine auto-injector that he normally would have used to counteract the allergic reaction had reportedly fallen out of his pocket in his car. Canul's partner called for an ambulance, but within minutes, the man went in anaphylactic shock and became unresponsive. He was eventually stabilized after being transported to the hospital, but upon being taken off of an epinephrine drip, the following day he went back into shock. 
the facility staff successfully resuscitated him, at which point he was placed in a medically induced coma. Kanul's condition gradually improved until he was finally released from the hospital a few days later. In the wake of the incident, the waiter from Le Tapageur was arrested for his role in triggering Kanul's life-threatening reaction, but the authorities ultimately decided not to pursue charges. Kanul filed a civil lawsuit against the man, although he claimed that the litigation wasn't about making money, but rather raising awareness about the seriousness of certain food allergies. News of Kanul's anaphylactic shock episode and his subsequent decision to sue the server was circulated internationally. Many weren't sympathetic to Kanul's cause, however, and instead criticized what was widely regarded as an overreaction to a wrong order. Thanks for watching. Would you rather nobody honor your requests or never receive the info you need from Google search? Let us know in the comments section below.